Hey everyone, good morning and thanks for joining. So today we are going to see that from the Zurich Insurance, like Hortonworks Cloud Solutions using CloudBreak. So we give it like a transforming insurance analytics with big data and cloud and we personally call it is ABDC. So who are we? I'm Abhishek Sakuja and a big data and cloud architect working with Everest and which is a strategic consulting partner for Zurich Insurance. Unfortunately, today we do not have Jose Luis, so I'll just uh, shift to Carlos today, who's, yep. who's from Zurich Insurance. Hello everyone, I'm Carlos Herrera, I'm the Big Data Development Manager. My job mainly consists uh, in organizing the development team and also to uh, assure the quality of our implemented code. And well, today we are going to speak about Zurich and uh, mainly about the migration with it of our Horton Wars at the platform in on-premise to the cloud and the final architecture we achieve to be there. Then if we talk about our business, uh, Zurich, as you probably know, is a, a global insurance company. Zurich is present in uh, more than 170 countries. It has approximately 55,000 employees. And the business operation profit for 2017, it was uh, 4,500 million of dollars. Uh, we are present in, uh, in, several, in several countries. Our largest market is uh, North America, followed by Europe, Middle East and Africa, Latin America, and Asia Pacific. Uh, our strategy and organization, basically Zurich have uh, uh, four main core business segments. General insurance, where we are taking uh, care about uh, protecting your uh, tangible assets, as for example, uh, housing, uh, real estate, and even uh, equipment and tools. Uh, we have also the segment of life, commercial insurance, here we are trying to, to have an holistic view of all the policies that our clients have around the world because uh, usually there are uh, big companies and multinationals here and farmers that is uh, on top three a retail company in USA and we provide the, the IT support solutions. Well, uh, Zurich nowadays uh, have a, a really important task because uh, the, the insurance industry is changing uh, in exciting ways. Our, 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 our clients uh, have different needs and expectations. And uh, what we are trying to do is focus our strategy in our customers, in simplification and innovation. This is because now, this is because we have this table that we try to have always in mind and uh, allows uh, the, uh, the fundamentals of our Zurich objective. Our purpose is to protect our client, to inspire confidence in him so he don't have to care about any, any danger that could arise. Uh, our values is to be one team and value the diversity and the potential of every individual, uh, embrace new ideas and deliver on our promises. And our strategy is to focus on customers, uh, simplify and innovate uh, so we are we're going to have better products, services, and, and customer care. So, please. All right, so what is our objective? Like, why we are actually doing all these things? So first, first of all, like being an insurance company, everybody would like to give some innovating pricing models. So that's the main objective for any insurance company. And it's not like everybody is doing it, that's why we are doing it. No, because we want our customer to be really happy. What is the premium rates we are providing? And that's what we would like to that. Being a data-driven culture is another thing that uh, being the objective of Zurich Insurance, and of course, we would like to give the importance and the value that we would like to redirect to our customers. And finally, being uh, because I, yesterday and day before, like yesterday and actually day before yesterday also, people were started talking about like you know the gold and the oil were the main important assets, but today it's the data, and so we do think that data is the most intangible asset that we have today. Motivation, like where do we started, uh, you know, thinking about the Hortonworks, thinking about, I, I'm not saying Cloudera, sorry, over here, because we have been continuously saying Hortonworks for a very long time. So please bear with me. <laughs> All right, so Hort where, where we actually we started with the Hortonworks and, you know, how we started with the cloud and what exactly the motivation we have. So this is what we, you, everybody actually know about, like I believe most of you already know that why we use Hortonworks. The most important reasons, 100% open source. And of course, the CDP is also going 100% open source, and the good news for us. So there, there is a no lock-in period. We, uh, we have the enterprise ready, which means that if I want to think about governance, I need to think about security, I can really trust Hortonworks, right? And we already have, like if you see the last point, our existing story, 
uh, over here. It's uh, already on Prim Solution. So we actually started in, uh, deployed the production in 2015 for Hortonworks, and that's what we are continuing. So this is what you can see that here we have the uh, Hortonworks uh, on prem, and this is where in the middle we are using Hortonworks. Um, I'm not going to talk about the ingestion layers, the processing, this, but we, because we have too much to talk. All right, so this is the, this is the main thing that we are, we are using the Hortonworks. And uh, actually, you know, if you see this picture, this is actually Jose Luis, looks like this. So <laughs> it's, it's specifically kept for Jose Luis. So he's a platform manager for us. All right. Now, this is like uh, in the on-prem, we are actually trying to utilize all the components that we have. So you can see from the governance to the tools to the data access, data management, security operation. Although like I would just highlight some of the components which are really, really crucial. So when you deploy, uh, you know, um, uh, like Hortonworks on, the, on production, it is like the one you can see over here, the authentication. So, being at Zurich, we are really concerned about the security. We are really concerned about the governance. Otherwise, you know the Europe rules as well, GDPR, they will screw it up. So we are really concerned about that. So Ranger, Knox, Atlas is the one which we are primarily focusing so that we are completely 100% compliant with GDPR. And uh, uh, the thing is that uh, another law that we really follow, it's called FDPA, which is German Federal Pro Data Protection Act, which is like we have to really think about that. So uh, this is, uh, there are like too many components over here. So I know that most of you have already heard about it or just like to highlight like uh, the most important work is where we are working with the Spark. Of course, everyone, lo everyone loves Spark and everyone want to do machine learning data science. So yes, we also want to do. And of course, it is a necessity for us. So there we have the Spark, and uh, we are using Hive, we are using Edgebase for NoSQL and data warehousing stuffs. So this is like a very, very short description about like why we are using Hortonworks, because we already have an on-prem, and we would like to, it's a strategic partnership, so we'd like to continue. But the most important decision, another decision that we need to make recently was why we actually want to go cloud. So therefore, we have like four agenda over here to talk about just about the cloud that not specific to a particular cloud provider, but like why we are thinking to go to cloud. So first, why cloud? Then we'll show you that what we have on on-prem and how we are going to, what we, we are planning to migrate. And then the small SWOT analysis with, and does it really cover our use cases, what we think in Zurich. So when we talk about the motivation, the four points that Zurich has thought in their mind before going onto the cloud is competitiveness, getting the operational efficiency, financial flexibility, I know everybody was thinks about that when they go on the cloud, and the innovation. These are the four key points that uh, were thought initially. Let's talk about competitiveness. Of course, who doesn't want to be com competitive today in the market? Like if you talk about like, I want to reach to the uh, market on time, I want to have a better insights, I want to give the customers the value, Definitely, everybody would like to have the competitiveness. And of course, cloud service is the one where you go and jump and you have every service that you would like. So they give you a competitive edge at every point of time. Then, operational efficiency. We have like every business, like uh, most of the business has different areas in it, right? And uh, if you are completely focusing on, you know, getting your infrastructure up, getting uh, your operational cost going on today, data centers, talking about the coolings and everything, IT personnel, sorry for them who's working in the data centers, but um, the, there we get the one other opportunity when we go on cloud, we really need to don't need to think about that. For example, we take IS, which is infrastructure as a service. We have PaaS, which is platform as a service, where you only manage some of the workloads and then the rest goes to the cloud services. But remember, they, they talks about the shared responsibility model. Do not forget that, very important. So you get more time, automation, standardization, you get more time when you go on cloud. Then. All right, oh sorry. So financial flexibility. So if you read the first line, it talks about strong impact on company's budget. It really does. So whether it could be two things, it's positive or the negative. You really need to think about like, are you making a positive impact on your budget with the cloud or it's a negative? So don't just go and go on cloud because everybody is using it. You need to think about your use case. You need to think about like, do you really need to go on cloud or is your existing thing is done? But for me, for we, like for Zurich Insurance, like of course we have to go to cloud because we want to make a strong impact. Then 
There are some figures over here, like reduction of IT capital, like 20 40%, reduction of IT labor cost, 20 30%. And this is the major cost, which we could talk about the third one, which is your reduction of power and cooling cost for IT infrastructure. So when you go onto the data center, it's really hot. If you go inside any time, it's really hot. You really require cooling powers over there. All right, so innovation. And who doesn't want to innovation? Like, uh, uh, because since day before yesterday, I was like, since day before yesterday over here, like everybody's talking about different things in market, edge to AI, how we can innovate. And of course, Zurich Insurance has the objective of innovating the pricing model every time. And irrespective of ge uh, geographic, irrespective of demographic, we would like to give the uh, or deliver to the customers the expectations or the experience that they want. So of course, we also would like to innovate. All right, here you go. Thanks. OK, now we are going to talk a bit about uh, our on-premise cluster. In this case, it's the non-production cluster. Here we have nine virtual machines, 28 physical servers that in total have 3.5 terabytes of RAM, 560 cores, and 300 terabytes of store. Um, here we have three virtual environments, development, SAT, and UAT. Uh, we have done with virtual environments because then it's easier to have everyone uh, within the same cluster to share the resources depending on the needs of each project and the stage they are. Uh, then we have here uh, three edge nodes that works as a, as a gateway, so everyone in the project can connect there and use the tools that uh, Hortonworks provide. And also we have three utility nodes, so there we are installing the applications that the stack of Hortonworks don't provide, for example, Jenkins. This is our productive cluster. Here we have two virtual machines and 27 physical servers with a total of 7 terabytes of RAM, 1,300 cores approximately, and 1.2 petabytes of store. In this case, uh, there are three, uh, two sorry, virtual environments. One is the productive ones, where we have all our projects running. And we have also here the research environment. In this case, this uh, have a specific YARN queues to be sure that uh, the analytics that they are doing there are not affected or running processes in production. Yeah, thank you. So um, in the previous slide also, you must have seen that uh, Zurich Insurance production Y23 worker nodes. Mm -hmm. We must be thinking of like, you know, Zurich Insurance being a very big, uh, it, of course, one of the largest and Y23 because we have 23 licenses of Informatica and we are going to increase. So that's why there's a limitation for the previous on-prem cluster. Okay, now talking about the motivation, like, uh, you know, normally the sweat analysis has been done on just one component, like, but you can see that we have two components on the left-hand side, right? So which is your on-prem and the cloud, right? Because we are just taking, because uh, we already have on-prem there, we already have the cloud. So that's why we just try to match the sweat analysis on both, so therefore strength, and the weaknesses for the on-prem and for the cloud, it's opportunity and threat because there we are looking for, right? So talking about on-prem strength. So on-prem strength is mainly when people think about it's most important is the security, right? Because we have a data, we, we, we can go there, deploy everything. It, it's, it's in our hand. Nobody is responsible for the data that we are storing on on-prem on, uh, on, uh, like we are the one who are storing. So. But what are the weaknesses that we think of the on-prem when we try to store the, uh, like, you know, going on to the on-prem and doing the all workloads over there? The major drawback is if you really want to deploy an application that requires the resources, wait, wait and wait. Maybe like four months, maybe six months, you have to maintain the IT skill peoples to maintain the data centers, everything cooling costs. So it's a high cost that goes to the weakness. So that is the major weakness that we find when we have on to the on-prem. But talking about the cloud, cloud is like it's a kind of opportunity for everyone. So not much discussing about the opportunity because you know people already know that the cloud, when you go to the cloud, you have the flexibility, you have uh, uh, you know all the infrastructure ready, you can go with IS, you can go with PaaS services, you quickly st uh, start your infrastructure, you really don't have to wait a long time. So there are lots and lots of opportunities, but the threats. I would not completely take it as a threat, but uh, you know the most important threat what people think is the security. Cloud service provider again says that it's a shared responsibility model, which means that we will be responsible 50-50. Like you take the services, 
You secure your environment. We secure the infrastructure. You are responsible for data and application. We are completely responsible of what the service we are providing to you. So it's a, it's a kind of threat like people can think of the security of your data, but again, it's completely in, in your hand because they provide you end-to-end -end security. OK, but does it cover cloud or use cases that we are running right now in our data lake? Well, uh, the use cases we have, or the main ones, are probably the ones we have in any data lake that basically are the data processing, the deployment cycle, and the analytical research. What we want to say when we speak about this kind of use cases about data processing is that we want to ingest data into our data lake to process it uh, using a pipeline and uh, to have this information available for the consumption layer. When we are speaking about the development cycle, uh, we are speaking about that uh, right now we have different environments and we are testing our code and validate it in different stages. Then we want to continue using this, uh, this cycle. And when we are speaking about analytics, basically our data scientists are analytic people, are doing research here, are doing queries. They want to use the productive data to test everything. And then they need this kind of use case to be able to do all of that. As you can see, we are not going to speak about the data sources they are going to maintain to be also into the Zurich ecosystem. The consumption tools are going to be the same, but we are speaking always about to change all the processing part. Then finally, when we saw that we are able to cover all of these use cases and also that uh, we take over about all this what analysis, finally we approved uh, to move to, to, the, to the cloud in uh, 2018. All right, so we have talked about Hortonworks. We talked about cloud. But how really, that's a question for us, like how we are actually going to go and merge the two things. And the, question, the answer has been given us with a cloud break. So I know that uh, most of you have not heard about this or this is something maybe new. And of course, or most of you have already used it, but this is a very, very good service that we have been using for a long time now. All right, so when we uh, talk about cloud break, like there is a already uh, what and why the cloud break. So according to Hortonworks, what they say, like when you want to easily provision your uh, clusters on cloud, like whether you talk about Azure, whether you talk about AWS, uh, you know, GCP or OpenStack, of course, cloud break is the one of the solution that you can really take. But for us, it's like, you know, the most important thing, bridge Hortonworks with cloud. So that's the most important point. Of course, this, this, everything goes the same, like simplify customer provisioning, demands-based auto-scaling. Of course, we are going on the cloud. The main reason is that when you have the workload, run on the cluster. If you do not have, just move out, save the cost. So that is the main reason for us. Like if, if still, because it's a very, very short description, if uh, you still want to hear, this is what the cloud break is all about. Your company needs to analyze data on a regular basis. As an IT operator, you need to perform this task quickly and without wasting valuable IT resources. You need the power of Apache Hadoop storage and compute and the agility of the cloud. Enter CloudBreak. CloudBreak, as part of the Hortonworks data platform and powered by Apache Ambari, allows you to simplify the provisioning of clusters in the cloud, while at the same time, optimize your use of cloud resources as workloads change. CloudBreak makes it easy to securely launch, configure, and grow HDP clusters in the following cloud providers. Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and OpenStack. For a complete demo or to learn more about the game-changing power of CloudBreak, go to hortonworks.com slash Hadoop slash CloudBreak. All right. So please don't think that Hortonworks has paid to advertise this. No, <laughs> that personal choice of displaying this because it helps you understand more. So this is the same what you have just seen in the video, right? So where we have the cloud break, we have all the services. And in between, if you see that uh, there is a description has been given just the three uh, simple points, like pick a blueprint, choose a cloud, launch the cluster. It's that simple, but of course, it's not that simple when you go from the configuration point, right? So it makes really things easy. And but of course, our target is like Azure. So that's why the, we have been targeting only the Azure rather than other services. But you can go and try other services that definitely would work. OK, so why and uh, like again, uh, let's talk about the simple features of uh, CloudBreak. Like we think that the three most important things that the CloudBreak provide, it's elasticity, flexibility, and enterprise ready. When we talk about the elasticity, whenever you want to have auto scale based on 
uh, what what exactly I like when we go to the cloud break, they provide not only the time-based policies, but the alert-based policies as well. For what is the alert-based? Like when you have Ambari, you're getting alerts, and then if you would like to scale, like you know, these there are too many alerts are coming up, and I would like to auto scale, just go and auto scale. So that's the uh, that's the really elasticity that you can get onto the cloud back. When we talk about the flexibility, the flexibility comes from the how you can handle it. Like for example, you can use SDKs, you can use APIs, you can use the beautiful web interface of cloud break, and you can just go ahead and scale. Uh, you know that's that's how it makes flexible enterprise ready. So of course we are saying that Hortonworks is providing this. So and Hortonworks is completely enterprise ready, which way you can have the security, data governance. So of course here in this as well we get the enterprise ready solution. So talking about cloud, talking about uh, you know uh, uh, the cloud break, talking about the HDP. Now how really we have brought these these pieces together. So first of all, what we are going to do, uh, again, we have a small agenda. After agenda, agenda, we have too many agendas. So, um, so first of all, we are going to talk about some of the components, because it's not just like you know you have Hortonworks, you have CloudBreak, you have Cloud, and you go on to the Cloud. No, there are too many things that you need to compare. So here also, you have some of the things that we are comparing, like <coughs> Cloud IS versus PaaS, then Azure ADLS Blob. And of course, we are using HTTP, but you must have seen on the screen that it's written HTTP HDF. So why HDF? So that's what a simple description about why HDF, and of course CloudBreak. And then uh, we'll also talk about like you know how really well we did with the security. What are the different aspects we have taken in the security for the consideration? Then talking about the PFCs, like how we have actually gone through our journey, like what where we have tested, what exactly we have tested, and. I, I believe that the, the, the point is like times when we said, oh, no challenges. People who are from the platform, they really know that we know when we are building the platform, there are too many, oh, no challenges when we say, oh, why this thing happened? It's screwed up. So, and the, finally, the day has come where we are going to talk about the, our final solution. Well, before I start to take the advantage and disadvantage of IAS and PaaS, I'd like to refresh a bit the different models we have. Uh, basically, when we are speaking about on-premise, uh, this is what we had before. And here we are saying that we take uh, control over all the layers that a server may have, like networking, storage servers. Uh, when we are talking about infrastructure as a service or IaaS, we are saying that we have, we can say, the 50% of the responsibilities. And in our case, it's Microsoft who take the other 50%. Then we are not going to think about where are located our servers or the networking they have. Uh, this is an example of uh, virtual machines, for example. And we are going to install our operating system, our tools, and we are going to deploy here our project. When we are speaking about PaaS or platform as a service, uh, here we just have a 20% of responsibility. For example, here we are speaking about HD Insights, where it's uh, Hortonworks or Azure who provides us uh, the full infrastructure and also the tools, and we can just put here our services or our projects. And when we are talking about software as a service, or SaaS, it means that it's Microsoft, for example, who take care about the 100% of the responsibility, and we just use their services, for example, with Office, Office uh, 365. Then, in our case, we are going to be focused in, in IaaS and PaaS, in IaaS with Azure Virtual Machines, and in PaaS with HD Insights. When we think about uh, PaaS, the main advantage that we can find is that we can set up a cluster in a matter of minutes. Then we can start to use it uh, as, as easy as it is. And also that we don't need to think about the operating system updates, for example, or the security updates. The problem or the disadvantage of use uh, this kind of services is that have higher costs. Also, in this case, uh, for, for the HD Insights, it's not provided Atlas and, and Nox. And also that if we need to use a new feature that the new versions of Hortons provides, we need to wait that we have this new HD Insight version. Instead of that, as a contrapoint in IaaS, we are able to, to have more flexibility and control of our machines. Also, we have the HDP full stack here. And it's easy to install the last version if it's needed, because we need some new feature that they provide. For example, now with Hortonworks 3.0. But as a counterpoint, now we are going to need uh, skills and expertise people who can maintain the infrastructure, the, the operating system patching, the security updates. In our case, it's not a problem at all, because at least our platform people uh, was managing on-premise, then they know how to do all of that. 
if we speak about EDL and Azure Blob Storage, uh, we can say that the main advantage of EDL is that it not have uh, any kind of limits uh, about the count size, file size, or the number of files we have in, in each folder. But as a, at a disadvantage, it only supports locally redundant storage. It means that we can have the data replicated in different data centers, but always into the same region. Uh, always nothing bad happens in uh, our region, for example, US, everything are going to be okay. Um, in case of uh, blob storage, it, uh, it have available uh, different uh, data redundan redundancy, but uh, we have some limitations. For example, uh, I think that a container cannot have more than 500 uh, terabytes of data. This could be a problem for some projects. But the, the main reason, because we choose a EDL instead of blob storage as our data lake, is about the security. Because in, in Azure Data Lake, we have available the Azure Active Directory, and we are able to apply the security per each file and per each folder if it's needed. But this is not possible with uh, Azure Blob Storage. The security is only in container size. All right, thank you. Uh, so here now we'll talk about the HDF. Like before, again, uh, I would like to show you a small With video. the growth of data in motion, enterprises are challenged to manage streaming data and get actionable intelligence in real time. Hortonworks Dataflow, or HDF, provides the only end-to-end -end platform that collects, curates, analyzes, and acts on data. The biggest challenge with getting streaming data insights is acquiring the data in the first place, quickly, securely, and prioritized for analysis with clear traceability. HDF Services provides comprehensive provisioning, management, monitoring, security, auditing, compliance, and governance that's integrated with the rest of your Hadoop environment. With a central schema repository, you can easily manage and govern the schemas needed for data flow across the enterprise for faster analytics application development. Hortonworks Dataflow, the data flow and streaming analytics platform for faster insights to your streaming data. All right, again, I would say that uh, Hortonworks didn't pay us to show this. And uh, you know, when we have uh, created this slide, it was still Hortonworks for us. And uh, it's now called CDF, so you can just try with the uh, Cloudera Dataflow as well. So when we talk about HDP, we mainly talk about the data at rest. Like when you want to process, when you re really want to store the data, like how you want to govern it, like of course you will be pointing always to your HDP. But when you want to take your data for the data in motion, like when you want to do the ingestions, so there exactly your HDF is, where HDF will come. So when we talk about HDF, like, uh, uh, you know, the yesterday and day before, again yesterday, they were talking about CDF, so it's the same thing that you was having, like uh, you have NiFi, you have Minify, you have uh, Storm, you have Kafka, so all these components actually plays a role in uh, HDF, and if you want to do real-time streamings, and you want to process the data coming in the real time, definitely you can do with HDF. But according to our use case for the Zurich, we, ha we are mainly concerned about how we can handle the real time ingestions. It, the HDFS actually provides a very, very good interface where you can go and quickly configure the stuffs. And the, go uh, the good thing that I believe that you do not need to do codings, right? For the developers, I, I know it's a bad news, but for people who are from the platform, they love it because you just need to adjust on the user interface and then you can just start configuring, and it can really work really uh, good. So uh, another point that, uh, you know, where uh, the HDF, is, uh, HDF helps, it's the lineage, right? You can track from starting to the end, like how exactly the data is flowing into your HDP, how it's coming to the rest. So this, these are the very, very good features, and you can really make it secured. You can work with your, um, you know, SSL, you can work with your HTTPS, you can work with the encryptions on getting your data in motion. So that's a wonderful, that thing that that's why we are using it. All right, so one more video. <laughs> All right, so this is like uh, uh, the demo that, uh, you know, the cloud break that can be deployed in two minutes.
right. I know that uh, it seems uh, very, very simple, but yes, of course, when you practice, you can really deploy in two minutes, right? And thank you, Gerard, for giving the login. <laughs> All right, so now uh, talking about the security, like how well we have secured, like we, as I said, like we are already, uh, you know, uh, taking all the perspectives, all the parameter level when we talk about the security. So you have on top, like we are leveraging Knox, and of course we are GDPR and FDPA compliant. And uh, when we talk about the Knox, Knox is a service where you can expose your services. So that's why we are using SSL encryption on top of that. You talk about Ambari, you talk about like, uh, you know, the services like, like Ambari views or we have uh, the other services, definitely they are, we are what we are doing, we are exposing to Knox. We are using Kerberos authentication, yeah, that becomes, uh, you know, a, every enterprise has to use actually Kerberos because it is a really, really good uh, authentication uh, uh, mechanism that has been in place. And then for authorization, for lineage tracking, for auditing, we are actually using Ranger and Atlas. So why we are using Atlas? Because Atlas uh, does provide a very good, uh, you know, lineages uh, uh, tracking. For example, classic uh, classification based, tag based policies that we can mention, and that is how we can track. Along with that, we are also uh, this is on the cloud, so that's why we are uh, completely on behind Active Directory. So the good thing about Azure is like when you have your on-prem solution, it is very very easy to integrate the Active Directory that provided in Azure. So that is one of the strategic de decision that why uh, we, are, we, went with the, we went with the Azure. And of course, in, on top of this sign, which means that it is behind the virtual network of Zurich within cloud. So this is the comparison because, you know, uh, as I said earlier, that people think about the threats when we talk about the cloud, it's a security. But just to give a comparison between like how we are actually going on prem and how we are going on cloud, and what is this, how we have actually secured the thing. So if you see the first one is the parameter level. So on-prem, we have Apache Docs. So of course, on in-cloud, we have Knox, along with we have the Azure virtual network, which actually gets integrated with the uh, Zurich network. On-prem, uh, when we talk about authentication, we have Kerberos, we have Active Directory, and, and when we go into the cloud, it's same. It's same, like we have the Kerberos, we have the Azure Active Directory. When we talk about the authorization, we have Ranger on-prem, ACL, RBA, RBACs, like ACL is your active control list, and your RBC, RBAC is your role-based access control. So same thing, we have it in cloud. Then we talk about the auditing, the Ranger, the Atlas, we are using in the on-prem, we are using on cloud. It's same, everything you can see that uh, we, are, we are actually doing the same. Plus, if you talk about the encryption, the data which is going in motion, we are encrypting using HTTP, T TLS, and when we talk about the data at rest, although we are not implementing Ranger KMS, but on the cloud, we are actually leveraging server side and transport uh, encryption. So you can see that it is not about like the on-prem is more secured or cloud is more secured. It's like the way that you design your solution, the way you make your environment secured, that's really make which environment is more secured. So. Um, yeah, that's for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, then we did uh, some POCs to check that we are able to do everything what we expected. But instead of uh, speaking about these POCs here, I want to show you a final draft about of architecture. And the first POC was about to test the HDP in IaaS and HD site in past to check if we are able to do all of our projects and the processes in, in both cases. The second POC was to test blob storage and EDLS to check how the security works, what kind of access we need, and what security we have to apply to be able to select this data and then to use it in consumption layer or to process it. The third POC was about the consumption platform. Uh, here we have tests with Azure SQL Server as a consumption, RDBMS uh, database, and Apache HBase in HD Insights, because at least in our on-premise cluster, we had some clients that was using uh, this HBase, and then we uh, want to still use it uh, here in, in cloud. Our four POC was with Horton Dataflow, using it uh, to ingest all the structured and non-structured uh, data that we have. And finally, the, the, the five POC, it's about to use Cloud Break and to test the elasticity that we are going to have with HDF and HDP. All right, so the challenge is like uh, talking about the oh no challenges. Like what exactly made us saying oh no when we are deploying the cl uh, cloud service? Actually, there are many, but I just highlighted some and we are going to talk about few of them. 
So the one that I really wanted to talk about is this one. The KSH logins has screwed our cluster. This took us one and a half months to resolve this issue, and we are working with the team of uh, Hortonworks uh, support, and we are unable to identify. Then we later on realized that you know our all the machines has uh, KSH logins by default, so some of the processes has made it, and it was really the cluster was down all the time, and nobody was able to identify that this could be the issue, and even now it's in the documentation for the Hortonworks that. Please don't do this. And uh, the other one that I would like to really highlight is ACL on ADLS. So make sure that when you're going on ADLS and you are trying to change uh, you know, the permission on every time a new directory are added, please make sure that you do it just once. Do not do multiple times. It will not work. So that was, again, a big issue for us. And uh, why Knox doesn't work with one gateway file? So this is like amazing, like how we actually came to know that this resolving the issue. We were uh, have a not, uh, Knox gateway file, and we took a backup of it. So just to like see that you know if I'm changing something, and then I need to change uh, again on the main file. But fortunately, it worked, and I came to know that Knox requires one backup file if you are keeping Knox, if you're exposing your service to Knox. So always keep one backup file for your main gateway file for the Knox. So that is why, and. Uh, of course, without, without the bugs, deployment is not possible. So if you're getting bugs, you are working on the bugs, then definitely you are going to have lots of learnings over there. Then this is what we finally came up, right? Uh, but still, it's not the final. So, <laughs> all right, so this is like you have seen initially. So we have the ingestions, and if you can see in between, we have the HDF and HTTP, and on top we are using the cloud, which is the blob, we have the ADLS, we have the analytics platform where you can see data breaks, where you can see R, Python, Shiny, edge base for the consumption and downstream. But where exactly do we using the IS and the pass service on the cloud? So if you can see that this is the pass for the SQL, this is ADLS, and this is for non-prod, we have the blob. Uh, as ha uh, IS has been taken for HDF and HTTP, and of course the pass sits here, the as sits here, and this is the pass, and this is the IS. So this is where exactly on the cloud we are, we are leveraging the IS service and the pass service. And finally, we have the cloud brick in between, and now you can take the photograph if you would like, because this is what the uh, final slide we have on it. All right, so. Uh, so once uh, we have uh, deployed the solution, uh, we would also like to share. Yeah, the implement the this is like the best practices which uh, people needs to think about like while uh, doing the implementation. So this is from our personal experience. So what I would like to uh, mainly highlight over here, like it is always good that you expose your service using your Knox because nobody will come to know that, you know, which is the services you're running, where exactly your services are running. You can make it really secure. All the data which is going in motion, you can make it secure using your Knox. Plus, uh, it is always advisable to have a project-wise access control on ADLS so that you can really control. And remember, there is a limitations of 32 ACLs that you can set on ADLS. So that's another, uh, uh, you know, the bottleneck that we have it over here. Now, we do not go with the internet on the cluster. It is always a bad policy to have internet on the cluster. Whenever you want to have uh, some repositories, download it. Keep it on your uh, you know, local machines and then use it. Do not have the internet. Custom images, like this is what we are using as a Zurich. We believe that uh, we need to be very, very secure environments, and that's why we have the custom uh, images. And uh, Hortonworks had really helped us in getting those custom images deployed. Implementations of black, uh, blank recipes. So this is the, one of the fantastic features. Like It's a blank, but still it's a very nice, which has been uh, you know, suggested by Gerard again, so, which is like uh, uh, implementing so that we do not really need to change every time the recipes that you have the cloud break. So recipe is just like scripts which you can run on the cloud. So you just make it blank, and every time you want to do something new, just run it. Every time over there, edit it and run it, and nothing. You, you don't need to change anything. And of course, we have the Hortonworks support and the platform team support coordination. Coming to the last one, which is the lesson learned that we have uh, during this journey that we have done at uh, Zurich. So uh, we, we think that the, uh, you know, the uh, utilizing on-demand cluster resources is the most important thing that you should be thinking. And cloud is the one which has really given us the cheaper options to run the 
you know, to do the test, to do, uh, to before going to the production environment, what are the mistakes that we can make? We can make on cloud, and they're really cheap. So you are responsible for security and cloud. Again, very, very important, share responsibility model. Remember, whenever you go on cloud, this is the keyword that you have to remember, and that's how you can make it secure. Scaling based on higher parameter resource uh, conditions, which means that if you're getting the alerts, it doesn't mean just auto scale. Monitor the alerts, how the alerts are coming, understand their pattern, and then only go for the auto scaling, otherwise you have to wait. And the next steps, of course, we are uh, thinking of uh, going on Hadoop 3x. We have HDP3. We have, uh, you know, CDF is also help us. Uh, CDP, sorry, CDP is also help us to upgrade, right? And then we have uh, upgrading to 2.9. If we want 3x supported, we have to go to CloudBreak 2.9, and then uh, orchestration layer to Azure Data Factory, testing the capabilities of DevOps, and moving to ADLS. So 3x supports ADLS version 2, and that's what we are planning, and upgrading the HDFS to HDF to 3.1 version, and maybe presenting another use case in the future. And this is our team. This is a platform team. Uh, in the middle, this is Jose Luis. Sorry, Carlos, you're not there. Well, Even I am Next I am time out I of come it. with a photo of the development team in the other corner. Don't yeah, worry. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm also, because I'm from Brussels, and the team is in Barcelona, so that's why I'm just on the uh, there. And uh, we are open for question and answers. Yes, please. Did, did you some ben benchmark in order to compare the performance you get on prem about your Spark processes running on prem with local direct access to the disk in, in front of object storage performance in the cloud? Yeah. So when you talk about the <laughs> so when you talk about the performance, right, uh, we be concerned like the performance mainly come with the infrastructure that you set up, right? So if we have almost the same infrastructure, which is on the prem, like means the same memory, same configuration, and same location, of course, uh, on prem may be very close, and the cloud service may be close, but co considering the today's network speed, we do not really bother about the location that we have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so the, in that sense, like I would say that the performance that we have measured between it was almost the same that we are getting. So there was not like we are going onto the prem and then we are going onto the cloud and the performance was really different when we are processing. However, there is a performance benefit that we have seen on prem versus the cloud is towards the storage, because on the um, on the cloud we are leveraging ADLS more than the HDFS. Means when I say more, it's not more, but we are completely using the ADLS. In that way, the performance was very different. When we have compared the HDFS, HDFS is little more when you compare with ADLS and Blob. So first is HDFS when you have an on-prem, then it's ADLS, and then it's your finally the Blob. So there the actual performance was different. Yeah. Sorry, any other question? I hope it was not boring. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so we'll go. Yeah, please. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Is there uh, so actually, initially, when we had the data lake, data lake was on prem as well. And along with that, we moved the data lake completely to the cloud as well. So on the cloud, it is on ADLS now. Earlier, it was on HDFS when it was on on-prem, but both way, we have HDP. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, I agree that the, the cost can be better in the public cloud if you uh, really use the LSTC in both directions, up and down. So yeah. the question is, uh, how is it scaled down? Yes. So um, actually, we have very predictive um, uh, you know, resource workloads. Um, definitely in that case, you know, when we go to the cloud break, there is also an options like uh, based on the time and based on the policies, like alert policies, you can actually scale up and scale as well as down. So for example, like if we have a workload, if you have to, let me talk about, first of all, the static uh, workloads that we have. We have some workloads which is running continuously for maybe six hours or eight hours. In that way, we just, uh, you know, uh, make it like scale up at a particular time and scale up at uh, at particular, 
like time when it goes down. Similarly, that there are other use cases where you have, say, about like uh, there are too many alerts are coming and your resources are full. There somebody has like we have some jobs which really require resources. In that way, we have taken the alert-based policies into control so that as soon as those alerts comes up the cluster will go up and then when the alerts goes down or like alerts means that CPU utilization or the memory utilization goes down and then again the cluster goes down. But very, very important thing to note over here that there is something called as cooling, uh, cooling down time period, which, is, uh, which means that you know, uh, between every scaling up and down, there is a time. There is a time difference. So it doesn't mean that you know you are just uh, there are alerts and you just auto scale. No, you have to wait for some time. So for a batch of you know nodes could be launched. So otherwise, you know if the nodes are launching, it takes around uh, 12 minutes for the batch to load. And then at, during that time, you have to set it as a cooling down period. Otherwise, other batch will come up, and that is not really good when it comes to cost. Any other question? <laughs> OK, so if there are no questions, thank you so much for joining. And see you around the conference then. Thank you. Thank you.